the topic which we are studying is measurement of radioactivity in that i talked about uh, ionization chambers proportional chambers and gm counter next we'll see other three chambers are counters next one is scintillator listen to me carefully you will understand with within a span of time okay otherwise it will be difficult to you to understand this first we should know why the name is given okay remember any subject any concept if you want to clear 50 to 60% of doubt without studying the concept without studying the subject try to know why the name is given to the concept we are studying one concept why the name is given scintillator there is a word called scintillation what do you mean by scintillation scintillation is a phenomena of generation of light when the thing comes in contact with radiation what is scintillation it is a phenomena of light production spark production it is a phenomena of production of light when crystal comes in contact with radiation when crystal comes in contact with radiation so we have a crystal here we call it as a scintillator one crystal will be there on this crystal when light falls this crystal will produce sorry when radiation falls this crystal will produce light now by using this phenomena if i can quantify the light i can quantify the radiation our aim is to find out how much and what is the type of radiation which is coming that what our aim so if i can the phenomena is principally here is when radiation is falling on the scintillator which is a crystal this scintillator will produce spark or you can say light the light is very 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 minute okay, the light produced by scintillator is very very minute if i can quantify that minute light if i can read that minute light correctly if i can quantify that minute light correctly i can quantify radioactivity what is ever happening there i can quantify the radioactivity but light is very small so how to enhance the light what we use we enhance the light if light is very small we can enhance the light what what we use there we use multiplier which multiplier what is light is called as light is made up of so the name is light light is made up of photons we are multiplying the photons hence the name of the instrument is photo multiplier okay photo multiplier so when the light falls on the photo multiplier one ray is divided into two two rays is divided into four four rays is divided into eight now eight is divided into 16 16 32 64 some so a minute light generated due to the interaction of radiation with the scintillator crystal that minute light is been enhanced with the help of photo multiplier now here i will keep photo detector I'll give photo detector here, then signal. Okay, so I'll get signal here. By seeing the signal, then I I can say that what is the energy or what is the intensity of radio radiation which is falling on the scintillator. This what is the construction and principle of scintillator counter, scintillation counter. I repeat once again, listen. in scintillator scintillation counter we make use of a property called scintillation what do you mean by scintillation is 
it is a phenomena of production of light when crystal comes in contact with or scintillator comes in contact with radioactive radiation we make use of this when the radiation falls on the scintillator the scintillator will produce small amount of light small amount of light is not measurable to make it measurable we use photomultiplier we will multiply that small light into large one okay we will multiply into huge size small size is modified to huge size then a detector is kept which will detect what is the amount of light coming and there is a, a signal which will give you signal saying that this is the amount of light coming then we can quantify what is the amount of radiation which is been fallen on the scintillator now this scintillator is of two types it is very important two marks question write out scintillator is of two types inorganic and organic inorganic and organic inorganic scintillator is made up of alkali al alkali halides is made up of alkali halides inorganic scintillator is made up of alkali halides example sodium iodide i don't know what is this tl you find out what is a tl in a, what is a periodic table sodium iodide and tl then cesium iodide same then cesium iodide and sodium then baf2 so these are the inorganic scintillators see what are the crystal i am showing here this crystal is made up of inorganic scintillator that is this this what the makeup chemical makeup of this scintillator so this one is used for gamma radiation inorganic scintillator is used for gamma radiation next is organic scintillator organic scintillator anthracene the name is anthracene anthracene is an organic molecule is a crystal which act as scintillator and still been still been is another organic crystal which act as scintillator the powerful here is anthracene less powerful is still been what is used for this is used for gamma this is for alpha and beta organic scintillator used for alpha and beta see this is not the diagram in given in textbook i just given you representation diagram okay for diagram you need to go to the textbook this is the diagram given in the textbook so if you are writing in the exam copy this if you forget in the exam copy this one no problem at least you get the marks next is auto radiography (laughs) 
आर्थो रेडियोग्राफी ओके वी हैव ई सी जी इलेक्ट्रो कार्डियोग्राफ कार्डियोग्राम हु इज इंस्ट्रूमेंट हियर ग्राफ आर ग्राम ग्राम इज द इंस्ट्रूमेंट सॉरी ग्राफ इज द इंस्ट्रूमेंट ग्राम इज द यू टेल मी वॉट इज दट इलेक्ट्रोकार्डियोग्राम वट इज ई सी जी इलेक्ट्रोकार्डियो ग्राफ आर ग्राम you find it out what is that listen okay. here radio so we have something to do with radio waves okay graphy detection auto why the name is given auto you tell me in auto radiography what we do is we use photo uh, sensitive layer okay photo plates we use photo plates photo sensitive plates what are photo sensitive plates listen if you go to previous era era means uh, in uh, 90s we used to have a camera where we will keep reel in that camera we will keep reel from there the name reels came okay we keep reel there that reel is photo sensitive when you take picture when light falls on that reel okay when light falls on the trail the position and everything will be captured there so if you are there in the light you are captured your color and everything what i mean to say is this photo sensitive film is changing its color depending on the light exposure same thing this photo sensitive film you keep one material between two photo sensitive films keep one material you have you are suspecting that this material is radioactive you are suspecting this material is radioactive keep this material between two photosensitive plates if it is radioactive it will cause dark spot on the photosensitive plate it will cause dark spot on the photosensitive plate if it is not radioactive there is no change in the color of photo sensitive plate okay dark spot no change in the color these two things you are going to observe this how you can find that yes radiation is present this method is used to only to know whether radiation is present in a particular substance or not what you have to do take photo sensitive plate keep this substance in the photo sensitive plate close it after few hours remove it if you find dark spot it indicates it is radioactive material simple but why the name auto is given what i assume is because we are directly measuring that see in the ionization chamber we are measuring the ionization gas gas is ionized then that ionized gas is creating current then we are measuring current in scintillation radiation is producing light then we are measuring the light here directly radiation is causing darkness hence i think the name is given auto auto means self auto means self okay hey, hence the name is given auto radiography what is auto radiography photo sensitive plates are there keep the substance between so photo sensitive plate if the substance is radioactive you find dark spot on the plate over that's all that is your auto radiography <coughs> next is semiconductor detector i didn't tell you about this not on this one semiconductor detector what is semiconductor 
What do you mean by semiconductor? Loud. Hey, anybody said to you that A section is better than you? Did anybody say? No? Yes? When I ask questions, those people are responding very good. What about you? Why you people are not responding? Hmm. What do you mean by semiconductor? Wherever we go, there will be written ladies first. Tell. What is semiconductor? It will not conduct full electricity. It only conduct half electricity. Means sometimes it will conduct, sometimes it will not conduct, depending on the change. That is called semiconductor. What is the example for semiconductor? Good. Very good. Silica. For silica is example for semiconductor. Now, take two semiconductors, two silica, okay, dope them, doping. What is doping? Adding impurity to the semiconductor is called doping and convert them into N type and P type. What do you mean by N type? Very good. Negative type and positive type. Very good. Okay, I didn't get this answer in A section. Very good. Negative type and positive type. So to get negative type, you need to look this with phosphorus. To get positive type, Dope it with boron. Dope that with boron. Okay. So what is positive types is it contains holes. Okay, imaginary holes. Negative type contains electrons because electrons are in negative charge, hence we call it as N type. Here no electrons, positive, hence we call it as P type. Now when you conduct electricity. When you conduct electricity, electrons and holes will be filled. The electrons which is coming here, it will fill the P and form a junction. We call it as depletion layer. We call that as depletion layer. Once depletion layer forms, there is no conducting electricity. Why? Because all the electrons are occupied, they will not conduct now. So, depending on the thickness of depletion layer, there will be conductors or no conductors. Get your semiconductor in this position. Take semiconductor, dope them, get a depletion layer. How to get depletion layer? Put connect it to battery. If you connect it to battery, after some voltage, it will get depletion layer by itself. Now, Take this and expose to radiation. Now think what radiation will do here. I should get signal. I should get conductance of electrons. What radiation will do? Radiation will knock out the occupied electron. Your alpha, beta or gamma radiation will knock out the occupied electron. Whatever this extra electron is there, it will come into the loop and I will get signal. If I quantify that signal, I can quantify the radiation. Over. Simple. I explain once again. Listen. Semiconductor detector. Semiconductor is an instrument which will conduct electricity at once and it will not conduct electricity at other time. That what is your semiconductor. Example is silica, doping, addition of impurities to Semiconductor is called doping. Conversion of N type and P type. N type is negative, P type is positive. Add phosphorus, it will become N type. Add boron, it will become P type. Then connect this to electricity, battery. Once you connect this to battery, there will be creation of layer called depletion layer. There is no conduct of electricity due to depletion layer because 
your holes are filled with electrons so there is no conduction of electricity in depletion layer now take this instrument and keep near radiation once radiation touch the depletion layer it will knock out the electron which is there in the hole it will knock out the electron. this electron will move into the circuit and give me the signal if i can quantify that electron i can also quantify incoming signal this how i can measure radioactivity by using semiconductor detector you got this one okay i'm going to write it down quick there is no diagram in textbook Don't write this doping. Just write n type and p type. Okay. Now listen. In a quick shot, I will explain all the five or six. Okay. quickly i will explain all the six detectors listen careful so the first three detectors are what are the first three ionization chamber proportional chamber gm counters ionization chamber what is there see in ionization chamber proportional chamber gm counter instrument is same what it contains it contains a cylinder which is given cathode it contains a rod which is given anode and it is filled with 90% organ and 10% alcohol 90% organ gas and 10% alcohol when radiation falls on the organ gas it will knock out the electron from the organ gas so we will get organ positive and an electron this electron is attracted towards the central rod and organ is attracted towards the walls this electron will go through the circuit we quantify the electron then we will get the signal then we can say that s yes, radiation is present this much but the difference lies in what is the difference between all these three very good potential the difference between three is potential first is if you take potential on x axis signal on y axis first is recombination recombine okay what is happening even though you increase the potential the electron will come here and no sorry here only even though increase the potential the organ and electron again they will rejoin first electron in the organ will come out potential is not enough to pull this electron hence it will again go back it is called rejoining so there is no signal next here the potential is 0 to 50 if you increase from 50 to 100 
then comes ionization chamber primary ionization ionization chamber primary ionization the voltage is 50 to 100 next 100 to 1000 we ionization chamber now we are getting for proportional counters why we call it as proportional counters because there is secondary ionization there is increase in signal proportional to increase in voltage if you draw the graph voltage and signal you will get this type of graph see this graph it is proportional hence the name is given proportional counters here primary ionization occurs here secondary ionization occurs next is avalanche effect gm counter here the voltage is still 3000 that is the difference between your ionization chamber proportional chamber and gm counters next is scintillator what happens in scintillator we have a crystal which is made up of either halide sorry inorganic or organic scintillator when light falls in this scintillator crystals when not light when radiation falls on the scintillation crystals there will be production of light this light is been multiplied by photo multiplier this light is been multiplied by photo multiplier detected and signal is given if i can quantify this light i can quantify the radiation next is auto photography we have photosensitive plates in between which we kept a substance if it is radioactive it will produce dark spot simple and the last one is semiconductor detector we have n type and p type which is connected to battery there will be production of depletion layer there is no conductance of electricity now when the radiation falls when the radiation falls on the depletion layer it will knock out the electron which is present in the depletion layer this electron will travel through the circuit and give us signal you can quantify that signal i can also quantify or measure what is the radiation this what is all five instruments which is been used in the measurement of radioactivity okay don't forget this very very important next is handling and storage of radioactive materials yeah we forgot one thing in ionization chamber uh, proportional and gm counters we use alcohol for what quenching effect we use alcohol for quenching effect what is quenching avoiding of unwanted signal is called quenching how it is avoided alcohol will absorb the unwanted signal so how to handle radioactive materials no need for me to say it Neither. so how to handle your radioactive materials first point is you should not touch your radioactive material with the bare hands should not touch with the bare hands you should touch with the forceps you should touch with the forceps next smoking eating drinking activities should not be carried out wherever you are doing experiment it is radioactive or not you should not do this that's all next you should wear sufficient gear what do you mean by gear clothing you should wear sufficient clothing while working in radioactive materials then radioactive material is stored in a container which is labeled as radioactive and if possible stored in lead lead will stop radioactivity lead containers okay it will stop radioactivity or if you have glass container shield that glass container with lead bricks l e a d lead 
shield that glass container with lead bricks. Next, wherever the radioactive material is stored, you need to monitor that area. You should know who is coming and who is going. You should monitor that area. The last one is disposal. You should take utmost care in the disposal of radioactive material. So, this what is the handling of radioactive material. Next is applications. What are the applications of radioactive materials? We have four applications right on radioactive therapeutics. Radioactive therapeutics means treating any disease with the help of radioactive material therapeutics. Then radioactive diagnosis, radioisotope in diagnosis, radioisotope in diagnosis, very very important two marks question. Then research. We also use this in research. The last one is sterilization. We use this in sterilization. Now first point. Radioisotopes in therapeutics. Okay, listen. I have a radioactive element which is eliminating radiation. I want to quantify this radiation in the form of energy. The unit for radioactive energy quantification is this one. MeV. What is that? I will tell you. Right on millions of electron volts. Millions of electron volts is the energy unit of radiation of radioactive material. If anybody asks you if radiation is there somewhere, if anybody asks you what is that radiation, you should be able to tell in the energy, this amount of radiation is there. So, we will see what are the things which we use. First one is gold. AU198, gold is used in the treatment of cancer, abdominal cancer, uterus cancer and urinary bladder cancer. Gold is used in the treatment of abdominal cancer, uterus cancer and urinary bladder cancer. Ask me how. Sir, how you are saying gold will cure cancer? See, cancer we have chemotherapy, radiation therapy. Two therapies are there. Chemotherapy and radiation. Chemo means we give drugs. In the form of okay, IV or oral. We won't give oral, we will give only IV. That is chemotherapy. Next is radiation. This is what is radiation therapy. What we do is, we take this. Let's say, let's say that person is having bladder cancer, urinary bladder cancer. I will try to put this. I will encapsulate in nanoparticle. I will take gold. I will put I will encapsulate gold in nanoparticle and I will make this nanoparticle to reach to urinary bladder. If it reach to urinary bladder, cancer is here. So, when it sees the cells, so this is your cancer. This radioisotope will release alpha or beta radiations. This alpha or beta radiations are, will not travel so much. Okay. It is only confined to the particular region. Now, this radiation will kill the cells. This radiation will not differentiate good cell, bad cell. It will not differentiate cancerous cell, non-cancerous cell. 
it will kill all the cell which is come in that path what do we call for radiation killing non cancerous cell if it kill cancerous cell you call therapeutics if we kill non cancerous cell you call side effect we call it as a side effect so it won't differentiate if you take gold isotope and keep here it start killing cells it doesn't know whether it is cancerous or non cancerous it doesn't have brain it will release a uh, radiations and it will start killing now it is with you how you well you can manage that you should direct the gold towards the place where you have problem so directly inject the gold nano particle directly inject where you have problem then only it is solved okay this how the cancer is been killed next one phosphorus 32 phosphorus 32 is used in polycythemia polycythemia to decrease the rate of formation of erythrocytes phosphorus 32 is used in polycythemia to decrease the rate of p o l y c y t h e m i a polycythemia to decrease the rate of formation of erythrocyte polycythemia means more erythrocytes are found poly means more so i want to decrease the formation of erythrocytes i will give phosphorus next cobalt cobalt is used in pernicious anemia it is a type of anemia pernicious anemia cobalt we have 57 58 60 anything next sodium iodide i131 where it is used very good problems related to thyroid gland problems related to thyroid gland so these are the therapeutic use of your radio isotopes next diagnosis next you write diagnosis iron 59 where we use iron 59 where we use if you are deficiency we will induce uh, iron when in which deficiency ha ah, hematological problems to diagnose the hematological problems we use iron 59 gold au 198 same gold it is used to study blood circulation in liver gold injection gold isotope injection is used to study blood circulation in liver let's say anybody is having liver problem circulation is not good in the liver in one of the part of the liver how should i found inject him gold isotope you can study whether circulation is good or not in the liver next iodine 131 function of thyroid gland to study the function of thyroid gland we use iodine 131 diagnosis then iodinated human serum albumin iodinated human serum albumin injection finds use in cardiovascular functions this injection finds its use in cardiovascular functions used in cardiovascular functions
anybody is having heart problem minute i don't know after 5 years he is going to get heart attack now only i want to fight what i will do i will take human serum albumin i will attach iodine to human serum albumin that is called iodinated human serum albumin i will give that injection to the person then i will scan the then i will scan the heart of the particular person after giving iodine injection iodinated human serum albumin injection then i will find where is the problem diagnosis okay next is research in research radio isotopes are used as tracers in research radio isotopes are used as tracers now listen sir what do you mean by tracer see i am giving some nutrition to plant or human i want to know to which part of the body this nutrition is helpful to which part of the body this particular nutrition is helpful so i will give the nutrition to the body now while giving the nutrition i will attach carbon isotope or hydrogen isotope carbon hydrotope assume this is the nutrition i will attach isotope to the nutrition i will give this nutrition to human body now this nutrition is consumed okay after scanning the body i found this isotope in brain what do you mean by that this nutrition is helpful in development of brain example you have omega 3 fatty acid omega 3 fatty acid is useful to development of brain how people came to know by tagging it by doing research tracer if you tag your hydrogen to omega 3 fatty acid you can find if you after scanning after taking the omega 3 fatty acid after one day if you find the accumulation of omega 3 in the brain it means it is used for brain functions like that you can trace anything in the body you can trace anything in the body because almost all thing contains carbon or hydrogen almost all thing contains carbon or hydrogen you can trace so that what the purpose of research for the radioactive material by using radioactive material in future if you want to know you developed something it is well uh, used for hairs i want to know how is it used for hairs i am eating something how it is going here for that you need to tag that something with radio isotopes make the patient to eat then scan the hairs if you find that isotope here it means your nutrition has reached hairs it means your formula is good your formula will cause hair growth that what is the research so this how we use isotopes in the research what you need to write there is isotopes are used as tracers in the research most commonly used isotopes are c14 and h3 <clears throat> last one is sterilization listen we have drugs called thermoliable drugs what do you mean thermoliable sensitive to heat not resistance if you expose to it they will destroy the drug will destroy if you expose the drug to heat okay the drug will destroy it is sensitive to heat remember this word thermoliable means heat sensitive drugs what is the best way of sterilization normal way of normal way of sterilization we heat we heat it but i have thermoliable drug i am producing a injection in which the drug is thermoliable now i can't use 
heating method for sterilization. If I use heating method for sterilization, God. Let's say I want to sterilize plastic. I want to sterilize some plastic. That plastic is screw, plastic screw, which has to be fitted to the patient here. If you if you fit that screw without sterilization, that patient will die. It will cause in infection. I want to sterilize this plastic screw. If you expose this pla plastic screw to heat, it will melt. It is also thermoliable. In that case, I use radiation. Okay. This radiation, I will take that uh, injection and I will put my radiation. Because radiation will not produce any heat, but it will directly kill the bacteria. Like your UV rays, it will directly kill the bacteria. This is how I can use radioisotopes for sterilization. What you have to write there is thermoliable drugs are there. To sterilize the thermoliable drugs, radiations are used. Okay. Then to sterilize the surgical instruments, radiations are used. To sterilize the thermoliable drugs, we use radioisotope radiations. To sterilize surgical instruments, let's say if it is plastic surgical instruments, we use radiation. What is the isotope we use for sterilization is cobalt 6027. Cobalt 6027 or CCM137. These two are used for sterilization. Very, very important GPAT question. Okay. Sterilization isotopes. Cobalt and CCM. We'll stop here. Answer attendance. Anybody call attendance? It is. Is it?